We're two best friends. Two mediums that live in a virtual dream house. Have our podcast taped and find out what happens when spirits get real. Real funny. <laughs> By the way, if you don't like cuss words, Dana, what do we rate it? We're rated M for mediumship or Matt's immature. I thought it was Matt is awesome, but whatever. Enjoy this episode. This is I'm a medium. Ask me how. Well, 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 if isn't it Donna? <laughs> it's Donna and Mateo. Hola, amiga. It's the new iteration of I'm a medium, ask me how. Yeah, yeah. well, we're just calling it featuring Dana and Mateo. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, Donna and Donna. Mateo. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> or don't get it right. God, the Lord knows that Barbie on Cameo can get it wrong, though. <laughs> Man, if you miss that, make sure you check out my TikTok because that is the gift that just keeps on giving. Uh, yeah. Matt and his best <laughs> friend giving, Donna. Giving something, Donna. Yeah, we'll have we'll have Logan insert that in just so. Just, no, just, please no, don't. just a little, just a little friend. <laughs> the, the little first part where she's like, "Your best friend Donna." <laughs> Hey, Matt, it's Barbie. Now, Donna, your BFF tells me that it's your 40th birthday. Happy birthday. I can't live that terror again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to get, you know what? Strap on your leg warmers, put on your uh, sweatpants or jeggings because we're going to get active. Yeah. Well, I think it's about active when our active mind interferes with what we're getting in our mediumship. And it's really easy to misinterpret something that's coming in when our active mind gets involved. First, we need to talk about like passive mind, active mind. I think that if you're new to the podcast or you're new to mediumship, welcome. You've got 53 episodes you can go back and plus to go listen to. But this is a great episode to start with. So don't Mm -hmm. worry, like you don't have to go back and listen to the 54 episodes you mm-hmm. should so, not but but you don't have to no pressure no Before pressure i'll one. send donna after you go listen to them in order <laughs> donna is she's so ridiculous she's awful she's the she you know she's the workplace mascot we love donna but okay so i'm going to talk about active mind Dana, and then i'll pass it to you for passive mind All right, get it i'm going to be passive pa- over to you i'm going to be passive over here in the corner while you're being active right. over there in your corner. So your active mind is like your conscious, like your everyday conscious where you're, you know, you're conscious of this moment. You're listening to me. You're in your active mind. When you're thinking about what's for dinner, you're in your active mind. When you are uh, living everyday life, you're in your active mind. And that's not where spirit communication lives. It lives in the pass it over to you, Dana. Oh, yeah. Look what you did there. I did it again. You did it. Oops, I did it again. Yeah, so passive is where we want to be in our mediumship. And Mm -hmm. obviously, if we're having a conversation or working with somebody, we're going to have a little of our active mind in there. And no matter what type of mediumship we're doing, if we're doing a reading for somebody or we're in a meditative state or even a trance state in our mediumship, there's always a little bit of that medium's active mind in there. And I think that it's important to know that, that the goal is always to be in as much of a passive state in our mediumship as possible, but knowing that there's always a little bit of a medium's active mind present when we are working with the spirit world and knowing in having awareness of how much of that active mind is present when we are working is really important because it skews, it colors what's coming in from the spirit world. And it could take something like waterfalls and skew it or color it. So we have to know how much of us is stepping in the message coming in from spirit. How much of us is coming in and coloring a stimuli coming from the spirit world. And the other part of this is, and why we really want to be passive in mediumship is because mediumship is something that happens to us. I constantly preach this at our development spaces, but 
everybody feels like I'm going to do mediumship. I'm going to go to circle and I'm going to do mediumship. When we go into these active states of like, I'm going to go do mediumship, we're doing the opposite of where we really want to be. We want to be in this very passive, receptive place. I always compare it to being an empty cup and letting the spirit world just drop in whatever they want and being a very passive and just aware of whatever is coming in, whatever is changing and just letting it come in. Mm -hmm. Um I think this topic is such a rabbit hole uh, because it has so many directions with the active mind and passive mind. And we'll get to active, active, passive, whatever it is later. Um, but I, I, I love that you said mediumship happens to us, not from us, because there was one time uh, we were teaching something and we literally said that in class and one of the students got offended because they were like, well, I, it happens for me and it comes from me. And they didn't quite understand that it's literally the energy blending with your energy to have it come from you. But it's happening to you because the spirit world awareness is in your space blending with you. And the only way that we can get that blend is if we stay in that passive state. So it's not like something where you can be in a conversation here and I'm like, oh, your dad says hi. Right. You need to be in a passive state. That passive state is so important. But the goal of mediumship or the practice of mediumship is to stay within that passive state for a longer extended period of time without your active mind stepping in. A little bit about the active mind that I also want to add is the ego is attached to the active mind. Your memories or your life experience is attached to your active mind. So the person or the core soul level of who you are in your personality, life experience, and all that is attached to your active mind. Now, spirit can use references from your active mind uh, memories to uh, insert there to get you to say something, but essentially it is coming from them. It's not coming from you. So, and it's a fine line. I love how you said that, uh, you said this earlier today. I don't know if you said it in the podcast, but it only, it's always there. Like your active mind is always there and it's a split second before it can intervene. So it's kind of like creating this endurance level to stay in that passive state, to keep your active mind at bay. And that is really, really hard. It's hard because our brain wants to fill in gaps. It wants to fill in little gaps. And that's uh, where your active mind will pop in is when your brain is actually inserting stuff. So it's it's hard uh, when you're beginning mediumship or even as a developed medium of where sometimes that came in, um, what did your brain add on? Um, and you'll figure that out through your yeses and nos. I, I'm a true believer in that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's where I was going to go next was nos. Mm -hmm. We get very invested in a result in mediumship and or an end goal in a mediumship reading. And if we're getting nos, it, it's a way of letting us know that where we are in a reading, certainly, but we get super invested in pleasing somebody or getting a result in a mm -hmm. reading. And when we're getting a no, that can often pop us into our active mind of like, oh, I'm not succeeding. But in the same breath, getting a super specific piece of evidence where maybe you get somebody's name or you get an address or you get something that's, you know, very, you say like the weird thing, like fish. And you're like, I don't want to say the word fish, but do you understand fish? And they say, yes. It almost pops you out because you're like, I can't believe that was right. And mm -hmm. if you pop into this very interactive, active brain thing, where we want to stay very neutral within our mediumship experience when we're doing a reading. We don't want to be pulled down by the no's and we don't want to be pulled up by the yeses. We just, because I know that you mentioned that ego and ego is mm -hmm. not a bad word. It's not a no. bad thing, but we don't want to be emotionally invested on whether we're getting it right or wrong. We definitely want to be invested in knowing if we're connected or not, we should be feeling the power. We should be feeling spirit in the room with us. We should be feeling a shift. When we say something, we should feel a power build, or we should be aware of a power drop if we say something incorrectly. 
but that's going to keep us on track, but not being invested of like, oh no, I'm not a medium if I get a no, but maybe restating it in a different way. If we were like, mm, no, there's something there, I'm going to restate it in a different way, or I'm going to go back to describing how the stimulus came in. I have a theory. Well, it's not a theory. It's a, I have a rule. Um, and it doesn't need to be a rule for everybody, but it's just a rule for me that if you can't handle the word no, then you probably should go try stay at home butterfly farmer because every medium, whether they are fully developed or they are at the beginning is the word no, like you're going to hear it. It's not something that you can escape. So if you have a need to always be right or your insecurity is wrapped up on the uh, pleasing of others, uh, it's probably best to do that work uh, because it will hinder your ability to stay in your passive mind and your ego, active ego, <laughs> overactive ego is going to uh, end up uh, rearing its ugly head. So get comfortable with the word no because it's not scary. Um, but you should really be paying attention to the power and the power will not lie. Never, never does. And, you know, I think it's important to note this as well. I've mm -hmm. seen so many people get really discouraged or shut down in getting no's in, especially mm -hmm. in development circle. That's where you're supposed to get no's. Yeah. And you look at it as I didn't have a successful reading in circle. Know that Everything happens for a reason and the spirit world brings up challenges for you in your reading specifically because they know that you're developing. I can't tell you how many mediums reach out and like, I was really frustrated with my performance at development circle this week. I didn't connect in this way. I didn't connect that way. There's a lesson in that for you. The mm -hmm. spirit world is intelligent and they brought you the communicator that they did. They brought you the sitter that they did so that you could practice that specific technique that specific day. So not, instead of beating yourself up about it, knowing that this was an opportunity to learn so that in the real world, when you're working with a real life client, you know exactly what to do and you don't go into that place of tension because at the end of the day, what we're talking about in remaining that in that passive state is not allowing tension to enter into the reading space mm -hmm. because it can just be a little bit of tension and it can skew everything. So I'm going to break something down. Um, uh, for what I feel is the definition of a medium. And I think it goes beyond readings. Uh, so we're looking at like the, like you're looking at uh, positive and negative, right? You're looking at like success and failure. You're looking at uh, depression and overexcitement or whatever uh, opposite terms you want to use. But mediumship falls in the middle of everything, right? So you shouldn't really have an overinvestment in like a sitter's reaction or cheer on your your yeses and you shouldn't like dip down and, and beat yourself up, but it's learning to stay in that middle road. And I believe that the passive um, mind is in that middle space. And it's a lesson that you can utilize in a majority of whatever it is that you're doing in your life, but learning to have neutrality and learning to kind of stay in the middle and learning to be in the me medium part of it is really kind of where uh, you should fall. So like when we are giving a piece of evidence with a desire of an outcome or uh, we're celebrating, we're going to go really high, right? And so when we have like a successful reading, we ride high on that. And I don't think the spirit world necessarily wants us there because then we're walking around being like, I'm the only one that can do this and nobody else can do this. And you'll notice that when you do that, that the spirit world will come in and slap your hand and push you back down. And then you're going to have a really low dip uh, when you have a failed reading. So when we are learning to stay in the middle with no investment on whether the reading is good or bad, you end up staying in more of the neutrality. And that's the lesson that they're trying to show you when you're starting to get good readings and then you have a bad one, right? So when you're going to development circle, it's learning to be neutral or learning how to be in passive, not only in action, but in mediumship itself. Uh, the lesson is, is it's not about you. It's not about anything that has to do with you. It's not your story. You're just the middleman. You're just the transcriber for the spirit world to utilize you as a catalyst to get their message along. 
What's uh, fascinating about that is learning how to stay within that neutrality is really hard. And that's where a lot of interpersonal development comes in, especially with your evidence, right? So like when we are getting a piece of evidence, always know that the the spirit world doesn't lie. They're not liars. So whatever stimulus is coming into your awareness is the truth. And it's our interpretation or how we're associating it with us that can pop us either in and out or stay within the neutrality uh, and learning how to just stay within that, but just letting the next thing roll because your focus should be on the spirit world of what's coming next and not being like, was that right? Did I get right? Did I get right? Tell me I'm a good girl. Huh? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so like looking for that outcome. So there's a lot that goes into just staying in the passive mind beyond just saying it does that does that make sense it does it does you know for me and everybody's going to have a different trigger if you will for why we struggle to stay within that passive state and that's where Mm -hmm. personal development comes in i know for me and i'm going to speak upon my own experience and where i've had to really grow and that's in my control i'm a virgo Mm -hmm. hi my name is donna (laughs) and i'm a virgo (laughs) Fucking daughter. <laughs> no, but I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm a control freak. I, and you know, may call it because I'm a Virgo, or maybe because of the trauma I had earlier in life. But I like to control things. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it makes me feel safe. And you can't do that in mediumship. You're not in control. The only thing you're in control of is yourself, and just simply being there and being available and just being along for the ride. And that was really hard for me. And you and I talk about the word surrender all the time. And we don't typically use that word surrender at Matt and Dana very often because it comes with a lot of different connotations. But I like to instead always use the word trust because that's what it finally took for me was to surrender would be to trust that it's not for me to control, that they've got, they, they have a whole map planned out of where we're supposed to go in this reading, where we're supposed to go in this sitting, whatever we're doing together, me and the spirit world, they, they're in control. They know the destination. I'm just, I'm just the passenger in the car. So, or I'm even just the driver and they're the GPS, (laughs) but, but we're Mm going to get there together. And it was so hard for me to not and even utilizing that that example of spirit being the GPS and me not going, no, it's better if we take this road. <laughs> and There's traffic ahead. I'm not listening to you. Yeah, and and no, and no, and it's spirit going like you don't know that there's about to be a car accident right here. Just take the road we're telling you to do. Take a right. Take a right. And you're like, mm-hmm. no, no, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep going straight. And they're like, just take a right. We know better than you. Mm-hmm. So it was releasing control for me. And you didn't realize that whole time you were fighting spirit, you were in your active mind Mm -hmm. and you were pulling yourself further away from spirit Mm -hmm. because you were having this like back and forth, back and forth. And so you were having a lot of your energy in those moments, disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting, and it was fucking up your flow, Mm -hmm. right? Because you just didn't like let go and let them drive and just say the thing that you were just literally active mind was popping off. And that is tough. I just want to give you credit because that's a really hard thing to let go of is letting go of the wheel and just being like, okay, well, you're going to drive where you're going to drive. And it's like driving a um, Tesla. Mm -hmm. It's auto driving. You're trying to grab the wheel. You're like, no. It's hard. And so I want to give people credit for that. And especially people like you that are just, I know you very well, Donna, that you try to control a lot of your life because you've had a lot of things in your past that have been a lot of unvariables and unsafe. Right. And mm-hmm. it's really hard to get beyond that. And, and and what took it, what took you to that point where you finally just said, you're right. Like what, what made you raise your hands and let go of the wheel on that? It, honestly, it was a lot of personal development and just doing that in my day-to-day life too, of realizing like I only have control over myself in my in my mm-hmm. mediumship, but also in my day-to-day life. I was trying to control everyone around me, everything around me. And that's, it was a falsehood. I was controlling nothing. It was all just a misconception or it was a safety blanket that wasn't actually working. I can't control anybody but myself. 
Mm -hmm. I can, I can state my opinion, but I was wasting a lot of energy and time trying to control things that were out of my control. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that it was like, oh, okay, I'm going to re reallocate my resources and my energy. And it, and it flowed, everything is mediumship and it flowed back to my mediumship. And I was like, I'm going to stop wasting my energy trying to control this and just be and not try to do, I'm just going to be. So mm -hmm. it was it it was a game changer, and I I submit all of this to you guys so that you can understand where are you putting tension in your mediumship. For me, it was control. Maybe if for mm -hmm. you, it's control too. But typically, where that hindrance is in your mediumship is also showing up in your day to day life. So, you know, we talk about going to development circle, which I will talk about till the cows come home. But we can always work on the things that are hindering us in our mediumship outside of development circle, in our interpersonal relationships, in our in our work careers, in our relationships with our kids, whatever it is, it shows up everywhere. These kinds of themes and it happens everywhere. So, you know, for me, that was it. But do you have anything that that helped you? Yeah. Um, Logan, I want you to do something right here. Um, I want you to put up a photo for two seconds. I'm going to do a little bit of our master class here. Okay. So we're, uh, I'm going to have you put it up and take it down. So those of you that are watching on YouTube, and if you're listening at home, go to our YouTube channel, watch this exercise. We're going to play with you in the episode is what image did you see? And could you recall it? And you can go back and you can rewind to go look at the validation of it, or I can have him add it here. Did your brain add something, right? Uh, that's what tripped me up and kept me in my active mind a lot, is that my brain was going in, and this is not something that I'm going to beat myself up on because I'm human, and that's what my brain is designed to do. My brain is designed to take in stimulus and try to um, find pattern within my life uh, of how to digest it and make sense of it for me uh, and how to gauge whether it's safe or it's not safe or whether it's important or it's not important. But my brain as a human is designed for that. And what kept me in my active mind was associating way too much with how it related to me. So if I saw the image, I'm just going to have them take it on and off. I would try to figure out how I could word that that how it would make sense for me to word that. And that was a lot of problem because it was overly inserting myself into it and pulling it away from the nuance of why they showed it to me and how it related to them. And so I would over explain something or you'll, I mean, you see a bunch of mediums on TikTok being like, I'm seeing a ribbon. Did he like ribbon? What kind of ribbon did he like? He must've been in the military and they must've tied it to trees. And then we go with the story and we add that story on. And when we're doing that, we're pulling ourselves not only in our active mind, but we're pulling ourselves further away of what they actually showed me. And how I learned to get that is I would always notice that it would be no. Like I would give it and it would be a no. And it was really frustrating because that point, my ego was like, you're not a medium. You'll never be a medium, nor do you ever want to be a medium. You know what I mean? Like it put me in that really weird place. But I didn't realize how easy of a fix that was, that all I had to do was go back and say the original piece of how it came in. So I'm seeing a ribbon. Do you understand this? The ribbon is blue. Do you understand this? And almost like breaking it down to the simplicity because it let me not only reconnect, hold my link, but end up having spirit guided a little bit more so where I could take my hands off the wheel and they could give me the next piece and let that unfold without me associating how it was important to myself. And that was a really big struggle. But when I found the answer, it made my readings a lot more in depth. It made them more detailed. It made them more um, aware of when I was coming in because I was listening to the power. I was listening to the energy of the spirit world and where they guided me. And if I was giving that explanation and I overindulged, I had to check in on my center. I had to see if my piece was veering off too much, but I'm still working on it. I'm not perfect at it, 
Um, because sometimes I'm a very clairvoyant reader and sometimes I go off on a tangent, right? And so I just have to learn how to reel it back and keep it small and then I make it in small digestible chunks so I can stay with the spirit world but stay in that passive state and know when I'm entering and when I'm not entering. Uh, and that was a huge success for me. That's really so cool. Ho- you hopefully know that, that helps you. That brings me to an interesting point when people will enter into their active brain and that's whenever... Mm-hmm we are holding on to something too long and trying Mm -hmm. to make sense of it because it needs to make sense to us, number one. Or the other thing that I see is curiosity. We want to be curious on how it makes sense because we want to know why a fish would make sense before we say it, or we hold on to it because after the reading, we want to know why it made sense. And so Mm -hmm. anytime we're holding on to a stimulus too long, whether it's because we're holding on to it because we're afraid to say it, or because we have curiosity around it, or we're trying to build a story around it, we are in our active mind in any of those situations. So, Mm -hmm. and it really is just even holding on to it a second too long we can start to divert or change just like that image you just held up. Our Mm -hmm. brain can start to pivot and change from that original stimulus in just a second time. So we just want to say, as soon as something comes in, let it go, let it say it, release it, and then see what else comes in as you're starting to talk about it. Yeah, that big pause, man, that big, we see that a lot. And and it's common, and it's not unusual. And I don't want you to beat yourself up on this. But when we can actually see when information goes to the medium in our development circle, and we're, I'm like, oh, they got it. Oh, they're holding it. Oh, oh, it's gone. oh, oh, the connection's gone. But then the whys, right? So like, when you're saying, um, why I, I like i'm gonna go back to the ribbon example i'm seeing a ribbon do they like ribbon do you understand it you're really not looking for validation from the sitter you're looking confirmation that you're a medium and that is a bigger um, unfoldment of it and you're not uh, being an empty cup because you're seeking some ego stroke you're looking for some sort of gratification from that and that's not what mediumship about I I said this in our development circle today, and I think it's perfect for this podcast, that mediumship isn't about you. It's not about you. So just say it. It's not that difficult. And you don't need to know the story. What the beauty of mediumship is, is that your sitter or the person receiving the reading knows the entire story of their loved one. Okay. So you're just saying words. Okay, and your sitter is going to be able to understand that. So it's not for you to know what about the spirit's life at all, because you should be so in your passive state in that flow that you don't even realize what's coming out of your mouth. So if you're noticing that you're very aware of what's coming out of your mouth, you're not as surrendered or you're not as passive as you think you are. And that's not a bad place. It just needs a little bit more work of just not being invested in what you're talking about. Because some of the wildest shit that has been validated, I don't remember until I watch it back from a reading being like, oh, fuck, (laughs) did you say that? Um, But because it's this ultimate surrender, it's almost like when you're um, daydreaming and you're so immersed in this daydream or, you know, a better example, reverse that, Logan, take that one out. It's like when you're watching TV and you're in in the show and all the room just fades away. And you're so in it that you lose yourself in it, that you don't realize that you're a voyeur watching a program and you're a part of that person's life watching a TV show and you don't exist and the room doesn't exist. But the minute that you snap back to reality, and this is a really good uh, indication that you're in your active mind, is when you start becoming aware of the room. Mm -hmm. And it's such an easy switch to just be so hyper-focused on what you're viewing that you can lose yourself. And that is a beautiful passive state. Another example of a passive state that really associates with people a lot of whether they're in their passive state or what it feels like to be a medium in their passive state switching to active would be like when you're falling asleep 
and you're starting to go really asleep and you're feeling that like warm soft tingle and all of a sudden boom like it feels like you're like falling and you slammed back in your body like that's not as drastic but it's that just shift in awareness of like you know you're here now but before you were so soft and so gentle and going to that beautiful dream state that all of a sudden your body became aware that it's trying to fall asleep. That's kind of like a lot like switching from passive to active. Like you, and it can take a fraction of a second. So just pay attention to those things of like when you're daydreaming and all of a sudden you come back, that's passive active. It's, it's, it's really indicative of like finding that flow and just staying in that dreamy state. That's where you want to be. You want to be in there and you get beautiful things because you're just so gone. You're just mm-hmm. like, huh, it's not about me. <laughs> yeah. And you're just, you're just so blended that you're not even paying attention to the words that are coming out. You're just going. And that's the sweet spot we want to Magic. It's yeah. magic. Magic happens. You start to sometimes in that passive state, when you find that flow, start sitting like them, talking like them, using hands like them. Um, I one time read for somebody that was hard of hearing and I was signing. Mm. while I was doing it so you don't realize that blend right there when you just kind of step out of the way and you just take your hands off the wheel that they'll come in and they'll blend and they'll aid you and your power will build and all that fun stuff but it will be very evident when you're back it'll be very evident so paying attention to that and then when you start to realize when you're starting to come back how do you get back to being in your passive state Dana how do you usually get back it's usually just slowing down because it happens. And I, mm-hmm. it's, I always use this. It's not if it happens, it's when it happens. When. Mm-hmm. And it's practicing how to get back to that. And that's part of the reason we, we recommend sitting in the power. Sitting in the power helps us to shift our awareness back and forth very quickly. But one of the things is, is just slowing down and being aware of where is the spirit energy in the room? Where is the power? Because if I can't feel the power or I can't feel the spirit energy in the room, then I know that I'm in my active mind. So that's number one. So it's just slowing down again and just starting to open up my awareness, attune myself to the energy of the room. And if I've already established who this person is, maybe I have, you know, this is why we we build on personality and character and how somebody feels to us because it makes it that much easier to relink with the spirit communicator. So if I know that I have a boisterous man that's very tall that I was linked up with, I kind of open up my awareness again and I'm like, oh, there he is. There's that man that's very boisterous and tall. And I just start, and I can even start to restate some of the pieces of evidence that that I start to talk about his personality again and how he makes me feel. And it's a great way for me to just settle back into him, knowing that there's no rush. I feel like so many mediums put themselves under this like time pressure or like, oh my gosh, I have to relink. I have to relink. Chill out. Take the pressure off. Again, that's putting tension where we don't need to put tension and Mm -hmm. just relaxing. Where are they in the room? Where do you feel the blend? Where do you feel the change in the atmosphere? That's what we are looking for. And then it's not until then, until you feel inspired by the spirit world to speak that you, or that you have a piece of information to you actually bring something forward. All right. Well, I think you summed that up pretty up. I do the same thing. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of trance. Dan, yeah. can you, can you explain to them what trance is? Well, so we what what in mediumship let's just talk about mediumship as a whole we are under our mind is being influenced by the spirit world on some level and so that could be you know images that we're getting we might hear things we might know things we might feel things we might taste things we might smell things and it's the level to which the spirit world has a hold or has any kind of influence over our mind, if you will. So Mm -hmm. if we're doing a mediumship reading, the, the influence is there, the blend is there, but it's, it's lighter because the medium's mind is more and more present in something like that. And we have blended with that spirit communicator, but the, 
the medium's eyes are open. We're very, even though we might be a little checked out, we're very aware of the room that we're in. I might, Mm. let's say I'm doing a reading for you, Matt. I know that I'm doing a reading for Matt. Like I'm very aware that it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I have an awareness of what's going on around me, the time of day, where I am, who I am, like everything. But I am under the influence of the spirit world because you might see some mediums when they start to shift their awareness to the spirit world to do a reading. We kind of get what I call spirit brain, where our thoughts kind of start to shift and change. And it's almost like our our thoughts are being influenced a little bit by the spirit world. And Mm -hmm. we just kind of get like drift off a little bit. Just like we like you mentioned daydreaming. I think spirit communication is a lot like daydreaming a little bit. And we mm-hmm. just kind of like drift off into something and words might become a little difficult for us as we kind of get under the influence of the spirit world. And then we might go into something a little bit deeper where we might do uh, inspired speaking, where the spirit world is speaking through us this is what some people might call channeled speaking or things like that. This is what some might call like a very, very, very light trance state. Mm -hmm. But this is where the spirit world in spirit inspired speaking is, is where the spirit world is inspiring your speech. Again, the medium's eyes are open. They're very aware of what's happening in the room around them. They can see a group of people. They can see that, Maybe they're on a Zoom, whatever, but they're very aware of the circumstances of which and whom they're talking to. The medium is aware. The medium's mind is very aware and Mm -hmm. present, but the spirit world does have an influence over that. Okay. So if I'm aware, just so I can Mm -hmm. make sure that I'm following along. So there's active, active, which is like our active brain here right now, everyday thoughts walking around. Then there's active, passive, where inspired speech, uh, mental mediumship would live, uh, um, channeled messages, if their uh, um, eyes are open. And then there's passive, passive, which there's a uh, trance mediumship where you're fully surrendered out of the way, completely not here. Yeah. We're, Am I the, correct? Yeah. And we're moving into, and in those active, passive parts, mm-hmm. we're, we're mostly medium aware. So we're mm-hmm. like 80 to 90%, the medium is aware, but we are... Uh, we're aware of the subtle influence of the spirit world. And that's why we say when we're doing mental mediumship or doing mediumship readings, that everything is very soft and subtle when it comes through from the spirit world, because our active mind is still very, very present. Mm -hmm. So in this, you know, going back to the last 30 minutes of what we've been talking to, you can see from that example, how easy it is for our active mind to influence when the spirit world doesn't have as big of a hold on our mind, right? So when we're going into a little bit deeper, when we're trying to shift more and more into a passive state, let's say that's sitting in the power, we're really shifting into a more passive state. That's Mm -hmm. when a bigger blend can happen. We can be more under the influence of the spirit world. We might actually blend with a spirit communicator or with a guide or something like that. That can happen in sitting in the power. It's not the intention of sitting in the power, but it can happen. Or we can go into even deeper trance states, entrancement. That's a, a deeper hold of the spirit world. Again, you know, if a trance medium were to speak, this trance, that there's still the medium's active mind, there's still presence of the the medium's mind in there. And it's still, there's still a fine line there where the medium's active mind can step in. And so that's why there's development and practice of keeping the medium's active mind away and just letting the spirit world do its thing. For some reason, when you were talking about this, it really inspired me um, to talk about like a surfer, right? So like, I'm going to use my hand as like a wave. 
that if the surfer in their active mind is up at the top of the wave, they have more risk of having their active mind come in and throw them back off the wave so they can't catch it. But when we let go and the wave is essentially spirit energy and blending, and we just kind of like start to surrender, we can ride with the coast and get a better blend and go further and ride the wave longer. But eventually we are going to fall off, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know why that associated with me, but I just wanted to say that. So we've got to learn how to like uh, what trains us in that is sitting in the power because you learn that in that sitting in the power phase that they come in and they intentionally fuck with us during sitting in the power to bring things to our awareness. So it's learning how to uh, become aware of it, pop up into our active mind and then just let go and go deeper. And then they're going to bring something else up and then you just kind of learn how to let go. So you're almost essentially surfing in that Mm -hmm. moment of just kind of learning how to go deeper. And so then eventually you'll go into a trance state where they'll talk through you or uh, they'll blend with you. There's overshadowing that happens where their face will go over yours, but it's learning how to like let go of the life and then cross over into the other side and learning how to uh, go deeper with them and where they can take you. I think there's a lot of confusion for a lot of mediums of where they fall in that. And then they think, and that's the hard part because our ego thinks that we're like somewhere. And sometimes uh, people that have been doing it 20 years think that they are so deep, but they're just surface level. uh, And that's work that they need to do. Right. And that's not no judgment, but it's learning that when you do go deeper, that you look back and you're like, well, I really wasn't as deep Mm -hmm. as I thought I was. And that's self realization and that's growth. And so if you, and I, this is a challenge to all the mediums out there, if you think you're as deep as you are, I want you to sit in the power more often and see if you can let go and look back and be like, wow, he was right. I, I wasn't as as uh, deep as I was, or uh, I wasn't as surrendered it as I was, or I wasn't so out of the way as I thought I would be, uh, and see where you can go, because that's only going to help you. It's like, And I want that for you. I want you to have an experience like trance, because trance like megan elisa and michael mayo said in our previous podcast trance enhances Mm -hmm. right so it's going to enhance your mediumship and the deeper that you go and the more surrender you get to stay in that passive state the better your evidence will be when you're active passive because your trust is there like you learn how to build trust within this passive state you learn that they catch you like the safety net and how real the spirit world truly is and the uh, the miles that it takes to get there are something that's not going to happen overnight. Like you're not going to go sit in the power tomorrow and be like, oh my God, I'm, I'm having them dance around the living room in my body. You know, that's not, that doesn't happen any, first of all. <laughs> but second of all, it's it, it takes time. And I think that there is no end game to this. Um, I, I I know Eileen Davies uh, is the, probably one of the best trance mediums, and she has been doing it for like 20 years, and she Longer still than that, sits yeah. over that, like 30, 40. I don't want to age her too much. No, she's, she's, an, she's an I'm going to have to look her in the face one day and say that she's <laughs> doing it for 60 years. Um, but there's there's a point where she's still a student of us, and she's still going deeper every time. I think that's important, you know, to... To round all of this out, I think the the name of the game in all of this, and I think to that point of we're always developing, is noticing and having an awareness of where we step in always in our mediumship. Mm-hmm. And I have that to this day of watching my readings back or just sitting with my readings after I do them and say, I stepped in here or I put a little bit of my bias in here. I, and, and just having an awareness of what is mine and what was spirits and knowing that Mm -hmm. you're a human being and, and you're not meant to ever do this perfectly. You're not going to ever get a hundred percent accuracy, but what we're, we're striving for is knowing that everything that the spirit world gives you is correct. And I think that it's important to know that, we're just striving to deliver it as best as we can without getting in the way. But we're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna miss some things. We're going to say some things wrong. And the development happens in letting more and more of it ourselves go in the process and having it be more and more of the spirit world and saying it as purely and as clearly as we can to that is true to the stimulus that they give us. 
without putting our own spin on it. And again, just knowing what's ours and isn't ours. I just had a little wild thought. <clears throat> um, and I don't know if it relates to this, but I'm just going to say it just in case. Um, so, you know, when mediums usually sit in the, uh, sit in the power and they can't quite like let go. Um, yeah. In those moments, do you know, you're actually supposed to talk to yourself within love at that point. So like a lot of mediums will sit there and they're, they're, they're trying to go passive and they can't because their brain is not shutting up. And so they're getting frustrated. That's actually the time when you're supposed to speak to your own soul. Yeah. And then you're supposed to like, um, tell yourself how much you love yourself and how much you're going to get through it. And you just kind of give yourself this time to speak within yourself so you can end up meeting them. So you're almost like raising your love level for yourself and letting go of all your worries, but acknowledging them, holding space for yourself to then in turn go deeper and connect with them. So if you find yourself in sitting in the power to train yourself to go passive, but your brain won't, I want you to talk to yourself with kindness. Talk to yourself with as much love as you possibly can. Talk yourself through the situation that you, your brain won't shut up about, but be gentle and kind to yourself and be supportive. And I want you to see if that works. For some reason, they just like say that uh, and, and see how that works for you. But I love that. That's the vibration of love, because I think at the end of the day, it's really... It's not the easiest thing to develop as a medium. And I think mm -hmm. overall, we're really critical of ourselves and we're really hard on ourselves. <clears throat> I'm talking to myself. I I, <laughs> I think I made mm -hmm. a, a TikTok video not too long ago <laughs> of like, there's nothing mean that you can say to me that's going to hurt my feelings because because I've said way worse to myself. I'm I'm my biggest critic and I'm the hardest on myself. And I And I know that I'm not alone when I say that as a, as a medium, I think we're all mm -hmm. wanting to do a really good job. And Hey, if, if I, if you count yourself in that with me, there are worse things to, to be that you care so much about this and you care so much about being a true voice for the spirit world that you want to be that. But I think when we align ourselves with the vibration of love, that is you're getting yourself closer and closer to the spirit world anytime that we align ourselves in the vibration of love. Mm -hmm. Well, with that being said, Dana, I think we've wrapped it up. Yeah. So active, active, passive, passive. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's actively get out of here. Um, <laughs> you are the light of 100,000 Donnas. You are the light. Alright, bye everybody. Do something nice to yourself. Get out of here. Bye. Bye. Your shit. bye. <laughs>